Okay, so I've got this uh, project file open that I'm going to use uh, just to give me a starting point for the uh, family that I'm going to make, the uh, joinery units. And uh, so just to uh, give me an idea what I'm doing, I'm going to use uh, lines because I can't use reference planes. I'm going to use detail lines just to roughly draw the shape of this kitchen. So I'll say it's at the end... Uh, well, I'm sure you can tell me, but uh, I'm going to guess and say that's three metres at the end. And I'll just copy that line across and make that, again, I'm going to guess and say that's five metres. Oh, I have to be more than that, maybe uh, ten metres. Yeah, that's about right. And then we've got some uh, some more lines above and below. And so that looks like four meters. Let's try that. Or maybe five. Yeah, that's about right. And I will uh, just use a couple of tricks here to uh, help me set that out. So I'm going to draw a um, line now across the uh, middle of those and across the middle of these so uh, using the midpoints to snap and now that'll just make it easier for me to centre these uh, long lines and I can get rid of the crossing lines in the middle and then I can just draw my um, arcs so uh, again, using uh, detail lines and uh, with a uh, start uh, end radius arc, it should snap fairly well. Uh, again, I'm just doing this by eye, but it should at least give me the tangent. No, it doesn't want to. Uh, so I'll go the other way and see if it'll do that. Ah, so with the arc tool would be good. Uh, so going this way. Yeah, I do really want that tangent, so I'll. Uh, I'll come back and make that more accurate later on, but that's uh, that's close enough for now. And uh, so I'll just trim that. And uh, so uh, then I can just mirror these and again trim. Oh, yep. Yeah, so thanks. So uh, there we go. And then trim. Oh, sorry, mirror again. And uh, so here, uh, there's no point picking an axis is there, so I'll just draw that and uh, move them across. And I've got, not, not a very good drawing, but uh, close enough to the layout that I want. And uh, so doing a kitchen or something like that, uh, you'd always want to have an idea of this before you go too far with your families. Uh, even though the uh, joiner units, where possible, are all going to be similar, um, you definitely want to have an idea uh, what they need to fit into. So I'll just uh, finish that off by putting in the um, the carcass depth and uh, so I'll just use uh, so offset for that and I'll make it uh, 600. Uh, no, sorry, I'll make it 550 so we can do a 600 bench and should I be showing you that? No, sorry, I'm, I'm being naughty so I'll do, I'll do that 600. Uh, so you've got to watch out. With kitchen units, there are standards and uh, common sizes, and uh, they do sometimes have uh, non-standard sizes as well, though, and you can get smaller than 600 if you need to. Um, now, I've realised now that my uh, proportions are a bit out, so I'm going to just move all of these lines down uh, a little bit. Maybe uh, a little bit or so. That's about right. And uh, move this across. So uh, it's not going to uh, help you at all with uh, families, what I've just shown you, but it might give you a few pointers on drawing, uh, just drawing generally. Uh, and you can see it's a lot like AutoCAD. Once you are comfortable with the uh, drawing tools, the, uh, the basic approach is uh, a lot like AutoCAD. And uh, just remember, you can always draw in 2D in Revit, just like AutoCAD, and um, fix any drawing up and make it look the way it has to uh, if the 3D elements don't uh, come in the way you want them to and you're not sure how to change them to make them look the right way.
So, uh, you know, especially with plans and things like that, you'll get lines that you don't want and uh, you need to take them out. You can't just accept the way that it gives them to you if it's not right. And uh, so that's why you've got this annotate tab with all the detailing tools and it gives you the ability to draw your new lines or um, override on the modified tab using the uh, line work tool. And uh, so lots of things you can do there to customise your drawings and I'll um, be spending a lot more time later on going through all of that with uh, the uh, presentation you'll be doing. But what I'll do now is uh, make a, uh, or make some of my uh, joinery units as separate families. Now I'm not going to do all of this kitchen as loadable families and that's a really important thing with things like kitchens. Uh, you need to think about which parts would make sense as loadable families, which parts make sense as in-place families. And there's an obvious one that should be an in-place family here that you might have thought of already. Um, and then there are some others that are better as loadable families. So the loadable families would be definitely the carcass. And I'll, uh, I'll start with that. Now, your, um, your library has some pretty good um, cabinets that will get you started. And this might save you a lot of time. I'm just going to go to the library. I'll, uh, I'll just use open. And then with the uh, metric library shortcut over here, Oh, sorry, that's the big one, you won't have that. But, uh, sorry, the, uh, this one here you'll have. Uh, in the casework folder, domestic kitchen, it's got some okay cabinets, the Australian ones. And uh, look, they're not bad. So they will maybe save you quite a bit of time. I'm gonna go back though, and go to the International Metric Library, casework, domestic kitchen, you've got even more. So, those things are huge time savers, and I use them sometimes. Uh, but notice most of them don't have benches. It's better to leave the benches off. You've got separate families for the bench tops, but I wouldn't even use those. You'll see in a moment there's a much easier way. So uh, anyhow, it's just good to be aware. You've got those things there, the standard carcasses. They're fine most of the time. Uh, but uh, like I said, I'm going to make mine. I've got some different shapes here and uh, so uh, I'll make them all from scratch and I'll start with the long one that I need in here so it's well I probably would want two there uh, two side by side so it's uh, at the moment 1869 which is a silly measurement so I'm going to uh, just put in some reference planes now and uh, make this uh, or rationalize this a bit um, Okay, so I'll uh, copy this across two metres, and that means I should be able to, you know, use that reference plane now to line up my lines, and then flip over that axis, and uh, you know, trim again to tidy that all up. So you want a rational basis for the uh, for the families that you're making. So that now should be two meters by uh, six hundred. Okay, so I'll just measure it to double check, but I'm fairly sure that's what it is. So six hundred that way, two hundred this way. Oh, sorry, two meters this way. So I can go and make my family now, and I know the size. And uh, so now going to the new uh, sub menu, I can choose family, and you get this big long list of templates. Now, it can seem a bit confusing if you try to learn what all of them do, but you don't have to do that. Just focus on the ones that you're using and that you need. Uh, now, also, they've taken a few out. I don't know why they did this, but there are a few that I've got, some, got from earlier versions that you won't get anymore. So uh, that can be pretty uh, frustrating. There's no furniture there for a start. So, so, yeah, you can still get it from the older versions. Uh, but uh, that's right, you can use generic model if you're not sure. And uh, also, you see, you should have casework there. So we don't even have the casework template. Now, I'll just see if you've got it here. If you don't, I'll, I'll put it on the library for you. Uh, so on your computers, you'll have... Oh yeah, see here you've got casework on your um, on on the computers here, so that's all right. No, generic model is different, um, but 
um, the way it behaves is is no different. It just looks different. So uh, yeah, look, I'm going to go to uh, my full list of templates then because you will be able to get to this. Uh, so okay, so there is the template that I'm going to use, metric casework. If you can't find this, uh, just use the other one, metric generic model is uh, is basically going to do the same thing. Uh, so casework's good for anything um, like built-in furniture and uh, joinery units, things like that. So uh, the difference between it and furniture is that it'll show being cut in a section, whereas furniture won't. So that's a good thing when you have a section line going through a chair like this or some other complex piece of non-fixed furniture. Uh, you don't want it cut in section, it looks ridiculous. Uh, but casework, anything built in, that's usually something you, you'll be designing anyway, uh, you want that cut. So that's why you use metric casework instead of metric furniture. And uh, so it's good to use those templates if you can. Things like casework, columns, doors, furniture are all categories that you've already used in Rabbit. And so by choosing these templates, you're putting the, these families that you're making into whatever category. Generic model is there if you don't know the category or you can't find one that fits in with what you want. So it's always a good thing if you um, you know, can't get anything else to work or can't decide, just use generic model. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to use metric casework and uh, here we are, we've got this family set up with some parameters. Now, have you done much with parameters recently? Any of you? No. Uh, I'm tempted to show you a little bit with them because they're really good, but uh, before I do that, I'll just show you the direct modelling method, which is to ma basically make the shapes using solids um, the size that you want. So I'll make an extrusion to begin with, and you've probably all done plenty of this, so I'll do this uh, pretty quickly. Uh, using the reference planes there, I could obviously draw my shape very quickly, but I'm going to just to use some of them, I'm going to uh, snap to the one at the top there. And, uh, oh sorry, I meant to be on the um, rectangle tool. Uh, so I'm going to snap to that one on the top. And uh, then I'll come down and I'm going to, uh, I'll draw it on the reference plane here, but I'm trying to avoid these planes because, <coughs> well, I'll show you, if I finish this now, if that depth changes, because it's a reference, it may move the shape with me, uh, with the uh, with the plane. So here you can see the depth 600. I'm going to change that to something else, just to see. Oops, clicked on help. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, that's go away. Okay, so apply. Yeah, there we go. So see how even though I didn't align this uh, bottom edge to that reference plane, because that reference is a strong reference, it's picked it up anyway. So just watch out for things like that. Uh, in this case, it's not a huge problem because I want the depth to be 600 anyway. But notice I didn't draw the sides over those reference planes because I want to be able to come back now and set the size I want just by typing numbers in. Okay, so I'm going to select my solid again now. Edit extrusion to get back to the sketch, and I will uh, set out either side just the slow manual way using the dimensions here, and uh, I'll make it a meter either side. Okay, so that will give me the um, you know starting point for my carcass. Now I'm going to do the kickboard in with each carcass, and uh, and that's the way they're built. So uh, there's no problem with that and uh, so I'm using the rectangle tool again but I'm going to put in an offset value this time of uh, I'll just do 20 mil that's pretty close to standard board size and uh, and then I'll draw up the other way so going I always have to try a few times with this is it this way no ah oh, sorry minus 20 is the trick to get it to go inside Depends on uh, on the method. Sometimes to get the offset to work and to go the right way, you've got to use a bit of trial and error because sometimes it's the direction you draw, sometimes it's not. Here though, there we are. That's going inside. Um, offset in modifier would work as well. 
Uh, so however you arrive at that, you can, I'm sure, all get a uh, 20 mil line inside your rectangle. And then I'll uh, finish that and you'll see now that that, if you don't know, automatically will give you a void. So you don't always need to make a void shape to cut away from a solid. If you're cutting all the way through, like I am here, it's much easier most of the time to just draw a second shape inside the outline of your extrusion. So that can save you some time. Uh, I'm just going to select my solid again now and you'll see on the options bar or in the modify panel I can just change the height and standard kickboard height is 100mm. So I've got my kickboard done. Um, oh, but actually it's uh, 600, so I've uh, done that the size of the carcass. It's actually got to be set back, so I'm going to go and uh, again edit the extrusion. And now I'm going to move these lines away from that reference plane. So I've selected them with a crossing going right to left to get those two lines. And now just using move, I can click a base point, take it up, and we'll just bring it back 50mm. Uh, finish. I've changed my kickboard and now I can uh, make a new extrusion for my carcass body. So again uh, with extrusion and uh, now I've got to remember how did we hammer the boards <laughs> in together. So the uh, I'll do the, do the sides first. So uh, the board at the side would uh, again just be a rectangle. So I'll draw it to begin with just by tracing over the uh, shapes that I already have because that'll give me obviously a uh, 20 mil thick board. And then I can simply cancel drawing, come back and select that line and change this dimension to, uh, well it'll be 600 minus the door thickness, so 580. And now, uh, oh, well I can just finish that one. Mirror uh, pick axis will save me some time there. I can just flip this over the other side. Back to the 3D view to check my heights because I haven't been doing that. So I'll just select both of them with control and do them together. So starting at uh, 100, which is the kickboard height, and then going up to... Uh, yeah, so minus the bench, so 870. If we're going to use just a 30 mil bench, that'll that'll be fine. So uh, now you could have a um, divider in the middle, about uh, here. No, I think we'll do that in, inside. So I'll uh, yeah, I'll just do the um, the base, and then uh, the back can go on top of that. It's a bit messy, but uh, let's see. We're going to have. Yeah, we'll just say they're the cheap ones. This is the way they do the cheap, quick ones. So, again, just another uh, rectangle for the base. And then uh, I'll switch to the 3D view uh, as I finish it this time, just so you can see, if you don't already know, that it's a 2D sketch, even when you're viewing it in plan, so you can easily draw these sketches in an isometric view like this. Uh, so we'll have this starting at 100 again. And then this will just be the thickness of the uh, board, so 20 mil, uh, sorry, 120, because it has to start from the uh, base. So again, finishing that, and uh, oh, I've uh, left it set back at the kickboard, so I'll have to just go back and uh, again, it's best to probably edit the extrusion here. I could stretch that out, but uh, I'm going to edit extrusion and just make sure that this line is right on that reference plane. It's going to go with it now, so if I change that reference plane it'll move, so just watch out for that. Okay, so there are two ways of doing this. You can have the back uh, coming down and uh, and sitting on right on the kickboard. Um, but doing it like this is, is okay as well. It's all concealed at the back anyway. And uh, it, it's probably easier to, to draw it this way as well and just as easy to build. So uh, back to plan and I'll make yet another extrusion. So it's all just boxes, nothing complicated so far. And uh, again another rectangle over the uh, back there. So this will just sit inside like this. And now remember we've got the base 
underneath it. So it's got to start at 120 and then come up to the bottom of the uh, bench, so 870. Finish, 3D view, just to make sure it all lines up. That's getting there. And then in uh, plan view now, I'll put in a uh, divider. So again, another extrusion here, I'll just draw a rectangle off to the side. It makes it easier in some cases to come back and set the size once you've drawn it. So I'll uh, do that now, 20 mil wide and the uh, depth would be, or the length, uh, this is 510, it'll be slightly under that, so let's say 450. So it was easier to draw that to one side because now I can just select the whole thing and use move and snap to the midpoint of the uh, top of that rectangle and then snap it right onto this axis in the centre. So that's uh, that's okay. Oh, no, actually, my doors, sorry, I'm going to have uh, four doors here, aren't I? So that should come all the way to the front, sorry. Yep, so I was thinking of, uh, yep, so I'll just move that forward. And uh, is that right? Oh, no, sorry, it's going to come all the way to the uh, front of the door, sorry, to the front of the uh, base. So there. Okay, so that that's going to work. Oh no, sorry, I've gone uh, still not far enough. So what am I looking at there? Oh yeah, so I was looking at the kickboard, not the uh, not the base. So this needs to come all the way to there. Okay, so now back in uh, 3D, I'll just double check it's all coming together properly. So that's fine. And uh, now I can uh, do the doors. So, uh, again, they'll just be rectangles, but then there are some extra things you can do here to make them show in plan. So this, I mean, a lot of the things I've been doing so far, you probably already know, but there may be a few things I'm going to do now that uh, not many people will have done before. So I'll start with uh, just a bit of setting out from, uh, or I'll just measure this, from the uh, midpoint here to the corner of this unit is... Uh, the size that my doors need to uh, to cover, so that's luckily for me exactly a meter. And so I'll just draw a rectangle that is uh, 500 by 20. That should be my door size. And then, oops, I'll move that onto the door or onto the unit. And, uh, oh no, sorry, I haven't been thinking at all here. Oh, that's alright, yep, so I'm going onto the front, that's okay. So my bench is going to be a bit deeper, so that's that's exactly right. So I'll uh, then set my, well here actually that's okay, the height, but the base should be 100 because that's going to come down to the uh, bottom of the base. So, so to the bottom of, of this edge here. So I'll finish that and it should line up exactly. There we go. Uh, now you can have a little gap uh, because in a 3D view that won't render. So if you're <laughs> going to be rendering these, you know, put a little gap in, but you probably won't uh, render kitchen cupboards. Uh, you, you might not. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to mirror now. Uh, with uh, I'll just use draw axis to make sure I can snap onto that corner there. So I've got a door um, on the other side. You could use a, a separate family for this because it's going to be repeated. So if you want to do it properly, make yet another family for just the door and then load it into this file and then it'll make it slightly smaller. But again, to save time, I'm not going to do that. Uh, oh, because it's a repeated element. So if I have the door as a separate file, in this file, it only needs to store the door once and then it just stores a new location for each new door, which keeps the file size down and makes things more manageable. Same idea as families in general when they're loaded into a project. Uh, so I might come back and, uh, and do that later to, to show you if you haven't done nested families before, but for now I'll just leave it as uh, solid and I'll again mirror the, um, the two doors this time to get 
all of my doors over those units. And so now really the main thing I need is a bench. And uh, so that's a good opportunity for me to show you some different um, solid, uh, yeah, solid modeling tools. Um, oh, but I meant to show you, so in plan, the um, uh, annotative elements as well. So there we've got the doors showing uh, as they would show in plan. So we're going to see these solid things being cut through, which really isn't what you'd want in plan. You'd want it to look different to this. So I'm going to start setting up what I want in plan using the tools on annotate. You've got symbolic lines. So you probably use model lines in your projects. And maybe some of you have used detail lines as well in your projects. Uh, symbolic lines are basically the same thing, but in a family. So symbolic lines are exactly the same as detail lines in a project. And they don't print in, or don't show up even, in views other than the one you draw them in. So they're true 2D lines, unlike model lines which show up in all the views. And so they're really useful for things like, what I'm going to do now, a door swing. Okay, you don't want the door swing from these units to show up in all your 3D views or your sections or elevations or things like that. So using symbolic lines, you can draw a door swing. Oh yes, of course, print. Yep, 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 yep. That's a yep, no point doing them otherwise. So. Yep, yep. <laughs> So uh, yeah, and so that's that's a good way of thinking of them though. They are essentially for printing. And so here I'll just draw in this arc uh, for my door swing and I'll do a line as well for the door. Okay, so that will show up only in the plan in the 3D view. See, it's not there. And uh, I can change the line weight. I'll make that a uh, different kind of line now. I can't see all my tools here, so let's see if we've got uh, a swing. Here we go. Elevation swing will do, I think. No, that's not good, actually. Uh, look, I'll come back and, uh, and go right through different line styles with you, but uh, for now, I'll just leave it like that. At least that way you'll get something um, showing up for your door swing. And uh, so now I can again just uh, mirror that and uh, so mirror draw axis and uh, just using the end of the arc there and now I can mirror all of them, actually I don't need to mirror the first one and uh, so again this time with mirror pick axis and I can pick that line now, so that's good enough and actually maybe just to show you a quick way of getting these door swings to look a little bit better um, you could just use that method that you probably just saw me do quickly under subcategory, set it to um, just use that elevation swing projection. Uh, oh, actually, I'll see elevation swing cut. Maybe that is even better. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, so it's got the dashed lines. It's not as good as thin lines, but it's still better than the heavy lines. So, yeah, when you select those any of those symbolic lines, you'll get that subcategory panel and then these are uh, preset subcategories you'll have um, with that template, the, the casework template includes those. Okay, so that's getting there for my plan, but I still need, like I said, the bench top. And uh, so at first that'll be just a rectangle. So I'll do that now with an extrusion. And uh, so I'll just again draw a rectangle right over the, uh, the ca uh, carcass. And now I'll change this and uh, bring it out a bit more. So I've gone a bit over. You want to keep your benches at 600 if possible. So uh, I've been going quickly and I've uh, miscalculated. That should have been 600, not 620. Uh, so, you know, it wouldn't take long to bring it all back uh, 20 mil, but I won't do that. I'm just going to bring this out now, uh, 650. So I've got a bit of an overhang with my bench. And... Uh, I'll change the extrusion start to 870 and the extrusion end to 900. Finish and I'll have a reasonable bench. But now I want to put a ball nose or no, a beveled, uh, always get the wrong term for these. Both of those are wrong. Uh, but uh, you know, a rounded edge. Uh, Aris is the right term for it. So I want to put a decent Aris on this. And uh, so on. Uh, the side view there, left elevation, 
I can um, draw that fairly easily. So uh, again, it could just be an extrusion. A lot of people would use a sweep or something like that for this, but really an extrusion will do the job just as well if it's just a straight. Uh, so here I can do an extrusion um, just using line and, uh, and arc. Okay, so that'll give me a simple rounded edge. Which I can't see. Oh, there it is because it's too, too small. So you can easily stretch this out to either end. Okay, so that's fine if it just needs to go along the front, but what if it needs to go around the sides? Okay, now that looks a bit messy with that line there. You can use join geometry to tidy that up. Okay, so that's much cleaner. Uh, and so Revit can give you, you know, reasonably detailed rounded edges and things like that. But like I said, what if you wanted to go around the corner? Okay, I'll stretch this out so that it would uh, make sense. Okay, so this bench, I'll bring that out on uh, just this end as well. So just uh, 20 mil or 30 mil. Uh, just double check what I did here. So, okay, so it's going to move this line out 30 mil, and then, um, okay, so using a sweep instead, I'm going to uh, just start by drawing the path. So, just going to sweep on the home tab, and then to uh, to start, you need to go to sketch path, and then I'm going to use pick lines to save time and just pick the bottom edge and the side. Uh, of this, so I'll just do those two. I was going to do no, I'll just do two of them, and uh, so that's my path done. Finish that, and then back on this sweep panel, you sometimes have to go to edit profile to force it to uh, come up with the uh, going to sketch mode for the profile. So I'll just do that, edit profile. Uh, oh no, sorry, just one last thing. If you don't get even that option, you might have to click select profile first. So when you do that, then you'll always get edit profile. And uh, it might ask you to switch views. Now, I'm going to cancel that and show you in the 3D view, you can usually see the um, gizmo most easily. So when you're going to draw your profile to go along this path, you need to be aware where you're drawing the profile. Okay, so that's where I'll be drawing it, on this gizmo. In the elevations, you can see it as well, but it's not as clear. I can see it from the side there, uh, and that's no good at all. But from the uh, left or the right side, I'll be looking at it. But I don't really know where it is by looking at it there. And uh, it's just good practice anyway, getting used to drawing in isometric views like this. If you like doing 3D work, it's, it's an essential skill, really. So, uh, okay, so now I can go to Edit Profile. And... Uh, draw that same shape, so just drawing a line uh, coming up 30 mil. that's my bench thickness and then using the arc tool uh, to come back and put that roundedness on there notice my lines are really heavy and I'm sure most of you know you can use thin lines here to turn the line weight off and that's good but it's also important to remember that the fundamental determinant of your line weight is the scale so going to something like 1 to 5 here still leaves me with some line weight, but much lighter line weights. Alright, so now I can uh, move this shape. So remember, I've drawn it on the ground, and it should really be up at the height of my bench. Now, I can do it in this 3D view, but it might be a bit confusing if you're watching me do that. So I'm going to go to a uh, side view where it's easier, and you can really, really see what I'm doing. So using the Move tool now, Snap to the end point on the corner uh, at the top to pick it up, and now I can just snap to the corner on the top of my bench. Back to a 3D view, just so you can see it's all still just 2D shapes. So I'll finish that profile. So there's my profile, there's my path down on the ground, and that's fine. Now I can finish my sweep, and I get a uh, rounded edge going around the corner. And again, it's no problem to use join for those two things to make it look a bit cleaner. That line won't go away. To make that go away, you have to round 
the corner on the path. So if I rounded that, I, well, that's an easy thing I can show you. I can easily come back now, select the sweep, edit sweep. I'll go back to plan to make it a bit easier for you to see the path. There's my path. Under sweep, I can go to sketch path, which will actually take me back into the, the one I've already drawn. And uh, so my radius is 15, because uh, I had a total thickness of a diameter of uh, 30, obviously. So I'll um, use uh, fill at arc here. So in the drawing panel, uh, if you, you, I'm sure, all used to drawing in uh, AutoCAD by now and using fillet all the time um, to join your corners together and obviously give you rounded corners, but uh, Trim does that in Revit, so don't forget if you actually want a proper fillet, you've got fillet arc for that in the draw panel, though not the modifier panel. And a lot of people don't know that. So here, if you want to type a radius in, you just need to tick it on the options bar, put what you want in the text box there, and then choose your two elements. Okay, so now that is the same radius as the one I've used on the profile, and so then. Uh, yeah, it can't keep them joined because, I'll show you why, my bench is not the right shape. Now it's actually gone and, uh, what's it done, deleted my bench? Let's just uh, make sure that's unjoined. So there, I've got an issue now because those two things were joined and uh, it doesn't, uh, it's got an issue with the uh, corner. So I'll just show you before I unjoin it. So here the corner still uh, is the original um, corner with no radius. So I'll uh, unjoin these, unjoin geometry, just to make sure it uh, doesn't cause me too many problems. There we are. Okay, so that's shown me the bench again on its own, and I can then just go into plan view and put the same radius on. And so, actually, this might give you a good idea why Revit can seem difficult as a modeler. And I always tell you it's maybe not as good a modeler as 3D Studio Max or programs like that. Um, not because it doesn't have the tools, but because you've got to model things pretty much the way they're built. And this is how it would be built. And so even though in 3D programs you can uh, do all sorts of tricky, tricky sort of organic modeling operations, uh, no one's ever going to be able to build those things. Uh, in order to build something in, in real life, <coughs> I know, having built these things, uh, this is what you have to do. What I've been modelling here is basically the same process as uh, what you go through when you're building it. So now, with those two things uh, chained... Yeah, sure. Did you select the arc tool to make it an arc? Yeah, it's, it's fill it arc. So yeah, once you click on that tool, fill it arc, then, um, then you choose the two elements afterwards, and it's just like trim. Uh, so, uh, yeah, now I can just use join and choose these two elements. And now I get that nice roundedness on the corner. Um, so then, uh, you know, you could use a similar method to do the handles, the door handles. So, I don't know, do you want me to show you that, or is that... Yep, yeah, yeah, sure, okay, I'll do that. So, okay, so in uh, plan, I'm going to draw a reference plane to make it easier for you to see where my um, where my path's going. Now, just remember on the home tab with families, you've got reference lines and reference planes, and they look sort of similar. Sometimes it just says plane, it says reference or plane, and doesn't even tell you which is which until you hold your cursor over. So, um, just remember, reference lines are only necessary occasionally. So avoid them. If you're not sure that you need them, just avoid them and use reference planes always. So I'm going to draw a reference plane where I want my first handle to be, so it'll be about here. And that's really useful for the uh, path I'm about to draw. So I'll call it door handle path. And then in uh, the plane view, you should be able to see that name coming up on your plane when it's selected, mainly. Uh, and, uh, yep, so now I'll go to the left elevation. So this is a good one for drawing the path. Back to the Home tab. Uh, and then, uh, again, Sweep. 
And so I'll just draw with... Uh... Oh, so I've got to go to uh, Sketch Path first. And then I'll just draw with lines to begin with. So coming from here, just roughly out uh, here, 50mm will do. And then down, that'll do. And back. All right, so that's roughly the shape of my handles. But I'm sure you'd all want rounded tops and bottoms to those. Well, maybe not necessarily. It looks a bit passe now, actually, probably, but still probably the normal way. And uh, so, again, I'll show you fillet arc. This time, though, I won't tick radius. Just so you can see, you can do it graphically by clicking on the two lines. Then I can move the cursor to give a radius. So that's another way. And uh, with the uh, scale turned down a bit, that's again easier to see. So back to fillet arc. I know that one was 20 mil. Oh, sorry, 30 mil. Uh, so I'll show you again with the radius. So I'll do it this time by ticking that, typing in 30 and then choose my two lines. Basically get the same thing. Uh, and now I should be able to move just this edge across and see how it keeps that radius on the arcs. That radius is probably a bit too big, so I'll, I'll just uh, change that to something else. Yeah, that's better. I like it not to look too rounded. Uh, yeah, that'll look. For something like this, they're not going to make the door handles based on your drawings. Um, they're made in a big factory somewhere, so uh, as long as you draw something that looks <coughs> close to what you're specifying, that's fine. You don't need to be obsessive about the size of things like this. And uh, so in a uh, 3D view, now, again, we can see where that uh, gizmo is for the profile. And uh, again, you could do all of this now in, in the uh, elevation views again. But I'm going to do it in the uh, isometric view because I'm only drawing a circle and it's fairly easy to snap to the center of that gizmo and then just come back and give a radius. So it'll be, I'd say 5 is even maybe a little too big, but I'll try that. So let's finish the profile, finish again to finish the sweep. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, and uh, the only problem is I've drawn it centred because I didn't think about the thing I mentioned right at the beginning with you, which is to set the plane. And uh, I should have done that when I first started drawing the sweep by going to the Home tab and clicking Set. And that would have let me choose the plane that I named Door Handle Path. Now, it's not a disaster because I can always select that object now Edit work plane on the ribbon and choose door handle path. Now, oh, now, sorry, it's constrained, so I've got to go back in to edit the sweep and uh, do it for the, uh, see, you can see the paths move there, but the, uh, it's the profile is still, oh no, that should be alright. So, uh, yeah, oh, you can, I, you can, so obviously we can dissociate that. Um, but uh, I didn't want to show you that way. It should it should go to the one that I've made it on. So I'm just going to go back a step and uh, show you another way you can try. So if I go to Edit Sweep, I'll just check what the work plane is now. Yeah, that's right, centre left, right. So I'm going to go to Select That, Edit Sweep, and now Set. And then I'll choose Door Handle Path. OK. And uh, see, that should have moved. There's something funny going on there. Tick to Finish. Yeah, it's not uh, not moving. If you do set it in advance, it works much better. Um, I'll show you the dissociate method instead. So I can always now, um, if I need to move it left or right, if you don't know, I'll show you in plan. Um, it's, oh, it's actually moving. <laughs> it's bizarre. Uh, again, I think it's gotten confused about the plane that I used, so it's letting me move it. But normally, if you draw on a plane like that, it will be locked to it. And you need to use this button here, or this option, to dissociate it from the plane. How do you set the Oh, using that set. So, I'll do another one for you. So, with set, um, then you just choose the plane from the list. Um, so, when did you originally make all those planes? Oh, I just made it when I made the door handle. So, this one here is the only one I've made. Oh. The others were there uh, at the beginning. So, this uh, center left, right, center front, back. They're going to default planes. 
so uh, yeah, so I can just move that one, and uh, for something like this, that's okay. And uh, so using move, just pick it up on the uh, reference plane there and take it across to this one. I'm sure you would all be able to then copy and do other things to uh, get the others. Okay, so uh, if you're comfortable with uh, modelling with solids, probably a lot of these things seem fairly basic to you, but then uh, the other major thing you've got to think about with all your families is how they show up. And just by doing a bit more setup with the display, you can save yourselves a lot of time when you start using it in your project. And so uh, what I mean by that is setting your subcategories and your uh, object styles. And uh, this is something you maybe haven't done very much in projects because it's done automatically for you there. Uh, so uh, I'll just save this file. And I'm going to save it into... Just over here. So, well, let's make a new folder for uh, Facebook. And I'm going to call it... Uh, Cabinet 2000 by 600. Alright, so I'm going to load this into my project now just to show you how it would show up the way it is. So, uh, load into project on the ribbon. And uh, I think it's project 2, the one I've been working in. Let's just see. Find out in a moment. Yeah, there we are. Okay, so I'm back into the project file and now I should be able to get this to line up fairly well in that area. Oh, I've got the bench with the um, extra bit that I don't want, but that's okay. Yeah. I haven't assigned any yet. That's right. You can. Exactly, exactly. So, um, and there's a few ways of doing it and that's really what I wanted to show you now. So. Um, you can see there I've got the door swings showing up in plan and the bench top. The carcass and the doors and everything else aren't showing up because they're under the bench top. So the bench top's hiding all of those things. And that's that can be good, uh, but that's not really what I want. In the 3D view, you'll see it's just got the 3D elements. And that's that's exactly what I want there. So that's, that's fine in 3D. I want to change the materials, but I've got the right things showing. Uh, back in plan. I need to make some changes. So I'm going to just select the family and then go back to the quick way, edit family, to get back to the file. So I've got the uh, 3D elements, the bench top, and don't forget the front of it. The, uh, let's forget the name for those. Uh, so all these 3D things, they will show up in plan unless I tell Revit not to. So I'm just using control to select all those solids. So not forgetting the base or the back, the sides. Okay, so I've got all my solids. And then on the uh, home tab, now where's my visibility settings gone? Sorry, it's uh, oh, so annoying this program sometimes. Uh, it doesn't give you the option when you select multiple objects types, object types sometimes. So I'm going to use Shift now and just deselect the sweep. And it still wants to be painful. Okay, I'm just going to select them one at a time and show you. So I'm going to select the first one and then you can see on the ribbon I've got visibility settings. Now I'm hoping I don't have to go and select each one individually to get this, but it's a really important thing. So. So the handles. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, I forgot about those. So maybe it was, yeah, hopefully. Yes, you're right, bingo, thanks for that. So yeah, so they, yeah, with just the extrusions, it's not too bad. So I can just select all of them. And uh, coming around, get the others. Because yeah, you don't want to have to go and uh, do this 10 times. It's bad enough doing it once. Get it up here. No. Tab. There we go. And 
Perfect, so I've still got visibility settings as an option there. And now I can turn off just plan RCP. So now I won't get any of those 3D elements showing. And that's, that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to save this file again, load into project, and uh, I'm just going to use the bottom option. If you're not sure here, um, usually the bottom one, but sometimes the top is better if you have done things with parameters, um, but you don't want the project to necessarily take on all of those things. Okay, so I've missed a few things that I still need to hide, but you can see what it's done there. Those hidden things don't show in the plan view anymore but they will still show in my 3D views in the project. Okay, so back to the uh, family file and I'll just hide the rest of those things and then draw in the new things that I want shown. So just the other one, bingo. Okay, so plan, go away and then in plan, you can see those hidden things are showed grayed out, uh, grayed out. So that solid there is the last one that just needs to be turned off in plan. And then you need to decide how you're going to show the joinery units. And, uh, and quite often just with dashed lines is fine. So having a uh, rectangle for the bench top is always good. So back on the, uh, oh, sorry, the annotate tab, we've got symbolic lines again, because it's really important that they don't show in the 3D views. So with symbolic lines, I can just use, uh, again, the rectangle, and you'll have the subcategory uh, casework uh, cut. And I'm going to draw over the... Uh, well, I'll just do the carcass as one thing. That would be fine in plan to show that main outline. Ah, now, here, that's that category, it turns out, isn't so good. So I'm going to just select these lines. Ah, and uh, to do that, I'll use tab to get all four of them. Or has that just got... I've got seven of them, sorry. I'll just <laughs> use control instead. Uh, and uh, just make sure I've got those four lines I had just drawn. And uh, I'll try a different subcategory, so we'll use uh, projection. No, that's no good. Uh, I'm looking for one that's dashed. Oh, just because it hasn't got dashed lines. So uh, so these are just different combinations of line weight and uh, dashed or not dashed, essentially. So here I'll try um, elevation swing cut. And uh, yeah, that's what I want. I'm going to show you in a moment where you, you get to these object styles, but uh, just so I can get something working. And then I'll draw another one with, uh, again, another... In fact, I don't even need to use a rectangle here. I'll just use a line over the bench top. And uh, oh, it's not going to snap to it. I'll just do it by eye for now. OK, and then this line, again, can be set to that same subcategory for now. Uh, elevation swing cut. And uh, maybe just one more line for the uh, divider. Yeah, need that. So again, symbolic lines. All right, so going through the middle there is, I think, good enough. Okay, so I'll save that now, load into project, and you'll see in plan, that doesn't matter, uh, in plan, that will look better. Now, the dashed lines are, are coming in differently because of these uh, object styles. So I'm going to go to the Manage tab now and just show you, under Object Styles, we've got uh, Casework. And then you'll see the um, different uh, sub-object styles there. So we've got uh, all of these different displays, and uh, I'd have to go and uh, find the right one to adjust those. So uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll do another video on, uh, on line styles and things like that, because there's quite a bit of setup involved there. Uh, yeah, but I mean, for now, that will that will get you started because you can get then different lines in uh, or different things showing up in your plan and 3D views. Uh, I did want to show you how you can get the uh, the line styles there. 
And uh, well, that, that's a kind of quick thing I can show you. Just back into the uh, family file, just to finish it off. I will uh, show you on the Manage tab here. You also have object styles. Oh, okay. Yeah, no worries. Um, if you can just grab uh, a piece of paper from the printer and just jot your names down, um, that'd be great. So I haven't had a chance to print out the other thing. So here you can see the the object styles. All right. So we've got elevation swing and hidden lines. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. So there's centre and dash. Okay, so in this is in the project again. Object styles. So it was elevation swing. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, hidden lines. Yep. So this is the only one being used. Elevation swing. Oh, you see it's being used as well. So, so uh, there we are. I can set that now to dashed or... I'll, I'll, I'll use hidden because that will always show up and I'll just set this one to hidden as well. Okay, so if you're not sure why, why I'm doing this, um, don't worry. It's not maybe the most obvious thing, but it's something you have to do. And there we are now. I've got the dashed lines coming up in the uh, plan view. I understand why you've changed them to hidden when what you want to do that. Uh, hidden is just a smaller dash. So dash lines are quite big, and for something this small, you won't you won't see them. That's why I can't see those dash lines. Uh, actually, I'll just try. I'll just change the scale, and then you'll see a lot more. So notice how now you can see the dashes on the sides as well, um, and that's again because all because of the scale. So one to twenty will be better again, and your joinery details probably will be a scale like that. So um, it should come in a bit more easily, but you still need, always need to check that when you're using line styles, they're just like materials. So you've got a different version in each file. So there's a, there's a, a version in the family file and a version in this project file. And that's why there was a difference. Then when you, when you model the texture, you're going to do a unit, so you don't have to do the No, no. Not at all. Like join. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to, you can use join geometry. Exactly, yeah, that's why. And sorry, I did mean to um, follow on with the object styles and, and finish off about materials. So I'll just do that and then I'll finish the video. So edit family again, takes me into the family file and you can see I've set object styles for my line work, which is important, but even more important is that you set object styles for your solids. And uh, object styles may be new to everyone. You may not have, probably none of you have, uh, well, I wouldn't be surprised if no one has really looked too much at object styles. But it is an important part of the program. It's just that it, whoever does it for you automatically, so we don't talk too much about it until you have to use it. There's a lot of other things you've got to learn first. Um, but uh, if you've been using layers in AutoCAD, you've essentially been doing what Revit does for you automatically with object styles. Object styles are just Revit's word for layers, really. But uh, it's one of those things that you often don't even notice until you've uh, been using the program for quite a while. And like AutoCAD where, you know, layers are one of the first things you have to do. Okay, so I've selected all my solids. And you can see now in properties, there's just material set by category. So I'm going to go through my normal material assigning process. Uh, so here, it's by category. I'm just going to hit browse. And I'm going to make a, uh, a new material by duplicating any of these. I don't care which one I start with, so I'm just going to duplicate default and I'll call this um, uh, melamine, might do, or let's, let's make custom wood. We've got a bit of money so we can get these and stuff. And, uh, oops, yeah, custom wood uh, laminate. Okay, so uh, now I'm just going to go and uh, put those material properties in. So I'll quick, uh, quickly just grab a uh, pattern, maybe just a plastic here even will do. Oh, here we go, there's a laminate, that'll do. Ugly, but uh, who cares. And then back to graphics and I'll just put a quick shading colour in. So hopefully you're all pretty comfortable making materials, but notice I'm doing it in the family. Um, and there aren't many materials in this family file. So hopefully that will reinforce what I was talking about with object styles. It's the same idea. Um, so in your projects you'll have a big long list of materials because they're all stored in that project file. 
So uh, that's okay. I'm happy with that material. And uh, so now it's assigned to all my solids. Now the handles obviously need a different material, so I'll give them something else. Okay, so back to uh, the material here, and I will again just start with that one, and we'll call this uh, metal uh, stainless will do. And uh, again, let's do the render appearance. Uh, aluminium would actually be fine, but I'll choose chrome. And any of these, who cares? We're not going to see it anyway, rendered. Just blue for once. And uh, so, again, might make the shading color a bit lighter, but otherwise, that's fine. Okay, so I've got my main materials assigned, but then there are a few extra things you should always do, if you, if, especially if you plan on using this family uh, a lot in lots of different projects. So, uh, so I've just got to select all the uh, extrusions again. And I should really make a group out of these, but uh, too late now. Uh, so I'll, uh, for the last time, just select manually. Sorry about this. Okay, so all of the things I want to have the laminate material. I've selected, and you can see they already have that material assigned. But I'm going to make this much more usable now by also assigning a parameter. Okay, so I'll just hit add parameter and I'm going to call this uh, cabinet material. Will do. And I'm not going to change anything else there. I'm just going to hit OK. And then um, that's it. So OK again. And now I'm going to assign a subcategory as well. So you can see here we don't have very many to choose from actually. So I'll have to go and uh, go to the Manage tab, Object Styles, and make my own. So I'm going to uh, just hit New down the bottom to make a new subcategory. And I'll call this uh, Carcass. Okay, and then I'll uh, make another one and call it uh, handles. Okay, so then, okay. So I've got to select these things yet again. This is the last time, I promise. Uh, so here, again, just the things that are going to be laminate, so it doesn't matter if they're sweeps or extrusions or whatever. Oops, uh, sorry, let's tab to get that one. There we are. Okay, and then in uh, the subcategory field here, now I can choose carcass. And then once I choose the handles, I can obviously set their subcategory to that. So again, subcategory here, uh, this time handles. Okay, so that's done. Now I can uh, again save the file load into project, and I'll show you what that object styles is all about. So again, overwrite the existing version, and uh, that's fine. So now, you'll see if I select this, go to edit type, I've got um, uh, fields. Now, I was a bit slack there, I didn't really look at what I was typing for the handle, so I'll go back and uh, fix that. So in... Um, <coughs> The properties for each handle, I can always go and look at the. Uh, oh, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't assign a parameter. That's why there's no, nothing there. So, so selecting each of those handles, uh, you'll see I assigned a material, but I didn't make a special parameter for them. So I'm going to do that now. So here you can see it's got the material metal stainless, but the button at the end, I need to click to add a parameter. So I'll now add that, and I'll call this uh, handle. Okay, and I'm just going to do one last thing in the um, family types. So on the uh, on all of the tabs, actually, you'll get that panel with properties and the family types there. And I've got that extra field for finish material that I don't need. And uh, oh, it's hard coded in, so I can't delete that. That's annoying. Uh, normally, I'd just remove that, but I can't. So I'll just 
live with it and leave it there. Okay, so I'll load that back in now and uh, again, either of these options here would be fine. So uh, now I'll select the family again, this time edit type and you can see I've got the two um, parameters that I made. So I can change, so the parameters allow me to change the material for either of those things if I need to, but it's come in with the materials, those default materials I set up already assigned. And if you change them here in the project, it yep. change them in the project? No, no, it won't. It just would change them in the project. Exactly, that's right, yeah. And that's a good thing because you, you might have uh, metal stainless that you've made a bit less shiny or something for this project, but you don't want your original metal stainless material to ever change in your library or whatever or in your family. Um, but then it's really important that that metal stainless in your project also doesn't change if you change the library one. Because every time you issue that project, even if it's 10 years after you've worked on it, it's got to be the same as when you issued it. So yeah, you've got to think about linking and when it's good, when it's not. And that's, yeah, that's a good example of when it's not. So, uh, so that's um, made things easier when it comes to changing the parameters. But then there's one last thing that you probably haven't done much of, but you maybe will start to now. In object styles, you can see under casework, now I've got cabinet, the one I made, and handles. So I can control the display of all of those things here. And if you've used layers in AutoCAD, you'd know what all of this does. So you've got line colours, if you wondered how you set the colour of your lines. So most people, until now, I'm sure you've all just been letting Revit decide. It's decided what your line weights and your line colours and line styles are for all of your elements, your walls and your floors, everything. But this is where it's all set. And I know everyone's drawing, I can tell when, when you haven't changed it because the line weights are too heavy. The default line weights in Revit are awful, I think. And uh, so the um, pen 4 is the real problem for me. And you can see in the list here, down the bottom, floors, they're set to pen 4. And uh, roofs, Walls, all sorts of things are pen 4, which is just too heavy. If you take that down to pen 3, it'll make your drawings look a lot better, trust me. So just little things like that, you do in here, just like layers in AutoCAD. Can you set up your, order, your Revit so that object styles is always... Oh yeah, of course, you do that in, in your template. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so these line weights, if you haven't seen before, I'll just show you one last thing with the uh, object styles. I'm going to uh, get out of here. I'm not going to make any changes here. I don't need to. But in uh, your line weights, if you haven't seen that before, that's where the pens come from. So that pen 3 I mentioned is good because it's 0.35 all the way up to 1 to 50 and then 0.25 for 1 to 100. But pens 4, this is why it's, it's no good for interior design, I think, especially, because you're doing 1 to 50s all the time. And 0.5 is just too heavy for most of your elements at 1 to 50. And that's why the drawings look too heavy and, and technical and over, overly, uh, or not graphical enough, because uh, you need that fine control of line weight. And uh, just to give you an idea how fine that control will be, um, when, we, when I used to do a lot of drawing um, using line weight, um, you know, doing it every day, uh, I'd print out at least 20 or 30 sheets a day just for testing, just to see how the line weights were looking at different scales. Um, it's so important. It, that's really the way you make your drawings look professional. The shading and all of that's good and the graphics is nice, especially while you're doing student projects, but to, to get really professional looking, especially orthographic drawings, you've got to have total control over the line weights. It's critical. And, and really fine control, just little differences can make a huge difference. So uh, that's where you set it. Once you understand that, it, it'll take a bit of playing around for you to get what you want. Yep, sure. So under additional settings, you've got line weights. Don't worry too much about the other one there, line styles. You can probably work it out if you have a look at it, but line weights is the more important thing. And then with object styles, now you can see how it's all set because once you know that these are just pen numbers in that line weights, and then along with that, line colour, just like AutoCAD, line pattern, just like AutoCAD, dashed lines and hidden lines. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit oh, since Revit, Revit 1. Yeah, sure, sure. No, it's exactly the same. This has been in Revit forever. So, yeah. 
so uh, there was one very last thing I wanted to show you though about object style. Sorry, my. Uh, sorry. Yes, yeah, we'll have a break in two seconds. But uh, oh yeah, the visibility. So that's a really important thing because I, I didn't really spend as much time as I would normally with you in second year looking at this. I'm sure you've all used it. So you can control the visibility of elements by category, and I'm sure you've all done plenty of that. But what if you want to just have, say, the casework turned off, but not also the kitchen cabinets turned off, but not your built-in units, or the door, the handles in your casework turned off, but not the the body. You know, you want things like that all the time, and you can really get a lot out of your views that way because you can have, you know, one or two views that are basically all from the same area, but showing completely different things. You know, things turned on and off in different views. Conceptual presentation views with the handles and all that detail turned off, and yeah, more detail in others. So here, under casework now, plus, there's my handles. This is the only way you can do it. So if I want to hide just the handles, that's it, because it, these are subcategories. You cannot make your own categories in Revit. They're control freaks, they're locked, you can't add or remove. And that's a good thing, because it means everyone's using the same layers, potentially. So that's a good thing. Um, even though it seems a bit controlly, it's it's good. Uh, that's your list of categories. You're stuck with that. And people think, oh no, I've got to put everything I make into one of these pre-made categories. <coughs> but it's not so bad because you can make as many subcategories as you like. You just need to choose which of those categories you're working in. And so handles here are a subcategory of casework. That's fine. Okay. And they're gone. So, uh, you know, I can show you more modelling and, and all the sort of tricky things you can do with families and parameters and things like that. But where people go wrong with families is not looking at some of the more basic display management. And that's really the whole point at the end of the day, trying to get drawings that print out the way you want them to. So, uh, you know, if that doesn't all work for you, you can always manually draw the lines and manually do your modelling. But uh, if you do, you know, put a bit of time in, if you've got some extra time, Got an hour. Uh, give it a go.